When you're building your railroad, um, it's fun just when you start putting everything together, you gather up all your bits and pieces. Yes. And, and the funnest thing here is you go to the hobby shop. Right. And you buy brick sheet and plastic strip and stuff like that. Well, when I go there and get ideas, I, I run up and down the aisle and go, ooh. Ooh, yeah. But you know, a lot of the fun stuff you can find like just out in your backyard. Yes, and that is even more fun. <laughs> Steve built his log cabin just out of sticks that he found out in his yard. Yes, that's the best way. And I think it's one of the neatest buildings that he ever built. Right. And nothing looks like dirt more than dirt. Exactly. I mean, you can buy Woodland Scenics, and we use a lot of Woodland Scenics, but if you want something that looks like dirt, get dirt. Contact your local gopher. <laughs> And cinders, now we have to drive 100 miles, well, not about 80 miles to yeah. get cinders. Yeah. We go to the old roundhouse up at Evanston, Wyoming, and we get cinders. Right. Now, last week, we looked at your miniatures. Right. I'm just one of these people since I was a child that I always found the other side of the paper more interesting. <laughs> so I kind of make this up as I go along. Now, this little lamp and all the little accoutrement that's on the table... They're all made from bead caps and jewelry accessories. And we can get that stuff at the, the craft store. Right, and with these kits, yeah, I've actually learned how to complete this just using bead caps. And this is one of our favorite craft stores, Joann's. Right, I mean, it's not just a sewing store. You get ideas when you go in there. Yeah, it's kind of a sewing store and a fabric store, but not really. I mean, they have all kinds of interesting things. Right. <laughs> Okay, score. Absolutely. <laughs> Look at that. Now that looks like something you can use. Yes, and I did. There <laughs> you, it is. <laughs> that's your cake safe for right. your, your uh, coffee shop. Right. And wow, that looks great. It is wonderful. <laughs> it's just the right size for your scale. Right. It's pretty tiny, though. So here I find a lot of the bead caps and jewelry making accessories and right here I found something that might make a coffee pot. That's perfect. Now these I think have many uses including maybe even in a caboose to use as a medallion for a light fixture. I'm seeing a ceiling medallion. Yes. For like a ceiling fan or a something. A ceiling fan. And that's what Steve used on Madame Wu's if you'll notice those are bead caps above the lights. Even the street light. Right, they look so decorative. The mind boggles. Yes, all the things you can do with craft wire, including making all kinds of things for a railroad. Yeah, well, and everywhere you look, chain and findings of all kinds, it's just tons of stuff. Oh, right. and, and seed beads. Yes. We have used seed beads for so many things. Right. Don't these look like the old glass insulators on telephone poles? Yes, I was thinking that, and that's what I ended up using. Just they, had to get the right color. They look perfect. They do. <laughs> we still need to rig the wire on here. Oh, absolutely. You know, I've been working on cut bars for our uh, 20th scale uh, couplers. Right. Uh, these will work great for that. Yes. Now, this is what I used on the spaceship for Plan 10 from Outer Space to construct the beehive. Oh, how neat! It's just a stack of those things. And then I filled in with epoxy around them. Well, that's cool! He said he wanted a beehive? He got a beehive. There it is! <laughs> a flying spaceship uh, built out of a giant beehive. And a bunch of other found objects. Yes, it's fun to go looking. Wow, look There's at the selection of foam fun. core. Yeah, and uh, I know a craft store that stocks this in 4 by 8 sheets. Yes! And I think that's what they made the sign out of. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? <laughs> Giant foam core. I'm sure that's what they did. That's a foam core sign. Vanishing grid? How does it vanish? It's still there. I'm looking at it. Yeah, it hasn't vanished yet. You just turned over. That's how it vanishes. That's how it side. vanishes. You use the other side. <laughs> that's really neat. That's really cool, actually. Oh, look at this. Check this out. Double thickness.
And look at the acrylic paint. Oh, a, a whole aisle, oh. just ah, Every look conceivable at all that. color, and at a fraction of the cost from the hobby shops. Uh, it's not as good as the stuff at the hobby shops, but it's still fine. Right. And a great selection of wood bits and pieces. Oh, and alphabet letters. <laughs> alphabet le Oh, uh, look at this. Bird houses. And oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> oh, it's the Toy Man spaceship. Yep, there. <laughs> but you can get all kinds of fun and interesting shapes that you won't find at the hobby shops. And they have a craft aisle at Walmart where you can get these same things for much cheaper. Right. And they have the same wood that you would find at the hobby shop. Exactly, all kinds. And a much larger selection than, than most hobby shops have. Right. We try to keep a really nice selection of wood just at the shop. Oh, we use a lot of it too. Yeah, it's, it's better to just be able to go to the bin and say, oh, here's exactly what I need. So we just lay in a, a stockpile of all kinds of wood. And these are some of those shapes that we get at Walmart. And a whole lot of other scrap pieces too. And Joann's is probably best known for their fabric selection. Right, and I like to look at their nylon net here because uh, outside of a wedding dress, it could be used for a chain link fence. That looks just like field fencing. It does. But there's all kinds of different shapes and patterns in this nylon netting. And then uh, ribbons. Right, craft ribbon. And we've used this to, to decorate the cornice on buildings. Yes and uh, draperies inside buildings. Exactly. You name it, it, it can be used for a lot of things yeah, other than what it was intended. It silver and this stuff, how do you pronounce that? Too, I don't know how it's pronounced. Thule. Thule. But uh, this is what Steve uses for chain link fence uh, in O scale. Right. I've used it all the way down to H O scale. Right, because cause the grid's just square. Yeah, and it comes in different sizes. And boy, does that make a nice looking chain link fence. Yes, and that looks wonderful. Isn't Look at that, that great? This is on Steve's old layout and he took this building off and and sold it to a guy but look at how that chain link turns out you would never guess that's nylon net nope it looks just like scale chain link that yes. you paid a fortune for at the look, hobby shop right. <laughs> This gives me a very, very interesting idea. Oh, what? Oh, you'll see. Ah. <laughs> okay, off to another craft store. This is Michael's. This is one of my favorites. This has more crafty stuff and no fabric at all, but this is much, much deeper inventory of just craft-related items. A lot of the same sort of thing, but a totally different selection. Right. Oh, what would you find? Oh, some foam. <laughs> Oh my gosh, seriously, look at that. Television. Not quite for the ear of it works. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd give that a yuck. Yeah. Yuck, yeah. Very, it's too hard. There's hit and there's miss. This is Guess a, which one that yeah, is. Yeah, I, I like mine much better. Yeah. Those are really pretty. Scale? Well, not for that price. Oh, how much is it? $5. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll improvise, but like I see, I get ideas. Absolutely. And over here, Sculpey clay. Mm. A lot of Sculpey clay. You can just about make anything out of it, and you know, it just bakes in the oven. You've made a ton of things for the railroad out of this. Oh yes, it's uh, all the way from food to bottles. <laughs> <laughs> and kitty cats. <laughs> yes, even a kitty cat. I'll bet you can think of something to make with this. Right, I mean, I've seen all kinds of possibilities besides resin casting. Yeah, I wouldn't even cast it, but uh, wow, those are really nice looking leaves. Right. And I know this is supposed to be steampunk. Right. But oh my gosh. I think of the possibilities of something like that. A pile of junk behind the roundhouse or just any number of things. Right. And these things, the... Uh, jump rings. Jump rings. Again, they can be used for all kinds of things. And the next time I do cut bars, I'm going to be using some of these. Right. Now this is Steve's current project. Oh, wow. And he got the idea for these letters on the sign from uh, Jason Jensen. Right. Who has the YouTube channel, Jason Jensen Trains. But those 
they came from Michael's. Oh, cool. So I looked around for them, and uh, sure enough, there they are. Now, these aren't the ones he used. This is a slightly different one, but I thought, that's really neat. This is what he actually used, is this set here. Right. And this is, of course, my current project. Oh, man. <laughs> Don and I are working on the Connie's. And we need air tanks. Oh. So I have fabricated that air reservoir for the back of the tender. There it is right there. That's cool. But I found the basic parts at our favorite craft store of all craft stores. Home Depot. <laughs> okay, technically speaking, Home Depot is not a craft store. Not usually. <laughs> But again, once you start thinking outside the box, uh, you come in here and you start finding all kinds of pieces that you can use for an air tank. Right, as I have done so many times, I go into the parts department and I see things that's like, I don't see plumbing parts. And I needed to find caps to put in the ends of my air tank and you found these, what are they? They're closet door poles for sliding <laughs> closet doors. <laughs> Definitely they're not the end of an air tank, but they fit in there perfectly. Right, they do the job. Yep. Here's the best aisle in the whole store, the plumbing aisle. Right, I had some guy get after me one time because I'm looking at parts and he's like, you don't know what they're for. And I'm like, I know what I'm using them for. <laughs> I don't care what they're for. Yeah. I know what I'm going to use them for. Right. Will this serve a purpose? Uh, I think so. I, mean, I don't I know, know what, it, what, but yeah. I know what it's for, but I know what it looks like too. <laughs> There's your old. It's like Lego, only bigger. Yeah. yeah. I know what it is. It's a universal joint. It's a universal. <laughs> That's legal now in about half That's the states. Because right. <laughs> it's universal, right? Yeah. Oh, look, boilers. That's for a K-series. Yeah. This would be more for a smaller locomotive. Mmm, that's for a really large scale. So here's something here that'd be fun. I could think of a dozen. I like it. I do too. Now, for a speaker baffle, yeah. this is really close to what we're... Right already using and right. that's just already like that right because i know what it's for but i know what we can use it well who cares what it's for i know what can we use it they're coming all sizes apparently too this one's if you need more sound mm -hmm. that's an adjustable baffle it's an adjustable baffle and, and people no that's a clean out we know <laughs> So this is what we've been making our baffles out of. We just have to kind of cut them down and turn them down. Hey, looky there. Now, that, now that's a baffle. A big baffle. Actually, you could use salsa. That's baffling. <laughs> now this is Steve's uh, High Street diorama. I love this. Oh, it's off the old MRS railroad. And he and I worked together on the basement years and years, oh, decades, decades ago. ago. <laughs> And when we were building it up, we were in search of bits and pieces and parts, of course. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that Steve wanted down here in the basement was a brewery. Oh, my. And it was sort of a beer garden and a brewery. And these big kettles, guess what the big kettles are made out of? I'm guessing some kind of plumbing. Yep, yep. They look like copper, and in fact, they Ooh. are. Oh, there we are. Check that out. That is just about perfect for a lot of things. Right. And like, for me, I saw Revere wear when you're making dollhouse miniatures. Yeah. And I, I know what it's for. Smaller sizes for that. Yes. Than that. Well, I know what it's for, but I know what I use. And I have to say, the Revere wear turned out so amazing. It was so much fun to make. And no one would guess that those are copper uh, pipe caps. <laughs> no, but I sure like my little pots and pans. And what in the world did you make the handles out of? Well, I never throw anything away, so I used the little metal pieces from my Metal Earth models. I saved all those and sculpty clay and some wire. Oh, okay, so that's just sculpty clay on the black parts. Right, right. 
And they come in all kinds of different sizes. They sure do. There's teeny, teeny ones and great big, huge ones. Right. And what I like is you can solder to them because sometimes I like to solder this stuff together. Absolutely. Just for strength. Case in point, the engine shop on the logging rail <laughs> Right. Now, this was, well, just a year ago, a little over a year ago. A little over a year ago. That we built this. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just isn't a proper engine shop unless it has a smoke jack. Right. Uh, in this case, this is a European roundhouse with several smoke jacks, but that's the prototype I fell in love with. Oh, right. That's neat. And I said, that's what I want in the logging rail roads engine shop. Man. And there's a start right yeah, there. I know what there is. Before, so that will form the uh, the tapered part on the chimney that pokes up through the roof of the engine shop. And then the lower part of that is just another piece of plumbing piece here. And then because it's a butt connection, I just soldered it together. There you go. Silver bearing solder. And then what was that bottle? You found this bottle. Oh, it be on a treasure hunt. It was fuel injector cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> so we just chop the top off of the bottle of fuel injector cleaner and uh, there it is yep. smoke jack it worked and you made the the little cap on the top the right, weather that cap. Was some of that aluminum that we have we buy that thin aluminum off of Amazon and then shoot a little black paint on it and there's the chimney and the smoke jack in the exactly. engine shop you can't see the inside of it all that well but the fun isn't just the looking at it, it's the building it. It's building it and coming up with the idea, the treasure hunt to find the parts. It's the process. And speaking of process, uh -huh. you're probably becoming well known for your power meters more than anything. Yes, yeah, so I always wanted to be an electrician, so I invented a power meter. And where did you find that little glass cover? Well, they're blisters off from a pill blister pack, <laughs> so when you buy your allergy pill. <laughs> and they come in a lot of different sizes. Right. That's a periscope. <laughs> That's a periscope off a Russian submarine. Unfortunately, what they're trying to see is right in front of them. <laughs> so it's a little bit different than going to the hobby shop. Right. It's more like treasure hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Mining. <laughs> right. So see, seeking out those precious nuggets and, and going, oh, what can I use this for? Yes, the scavenger hunt. Well, if you're not a subscriber, get on over to the channel and subscribe. Right. <laughs> and like and share and those things. But uh, the number one thing is to click on the blue button. Right there. Well, as always, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. And we hope you didn't find it boring. Because <laughs> I, I hope it wasn't boring. <laughs> we will see you here on Tuesday with some uh, Tuesday foolishness.